this place. Bow down. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We stand in your presence, God. We're standing on holy ground on this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship in your presence, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. You deserve all the glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. You deserve all the praise in this place. Hallelujah, Jesus. We lift up our worship unto you, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you in this place, God. We worship you in this place, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bow down before you, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless your name in this place. Bless your name in this place. Hallelujah. We don't need music. Oh God, we thank you in this place, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You gave us a voice, oh God. Oh God, we give it back unto you on this morning. We use our voices to lift up the name of Jesus. We bless your name in this place. Hallelujah, Jesus. King of glory, bow down. We bow down in your presence, oh God. We bow down in your presence, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bow down, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless your name, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, continue to worship him this morning. Bow down and worship Him. Worship Him. Oh, worship Him. Come on, worship Him this morning. Where you bury your place, where you stand. Come on. Bow down and worship The very place that you're standing. It doesn't matter where you are, just worship him right now. Can you just send him up a worship this morning? Come on, worship him this morning. Oh, worship him. Thank 
Shout out! 
I will worship you. King of kings and Lord of lords. I will worship you. You are mighty to save. And I will worship you. Lion of the tribe of Judah. I worship you. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will worship you. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are El Elyon. And I worship you. And I worship you. And I worship you. And I worship you. Yeah, God, I worship you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. But as you sit, just give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I don't know if I'm going to be before you long this morning. Glory to the name of God. But the Lord woke me up at 5.30. And he just shook me. And I've been in his presence ever since. And I said to God, I said, God, this very presence, I want to take with me to glory seekers this morning. God, let this very presence be felt, even by those that are watching, hallelujah, via the internet. But for a bit, I want to talk to us. As the Lord started to minister to me a few months ago, he kept, kept spe speaking to me. He kept saying to me, I'm El Shaddai. I am El Shaddai. I am El Shaddai. And I really didn't understand what he was saying to me. But I brought it to the praise team and we even learned the song. And I would continue to play it. And I would get bits and pieces as I tried to understand it in his fullness what he was saying to me about El Shaddai and who he was. And so I, I started to talk to the Lord about today's message. And even during our fast when he said to me that this is a time sensitive season that we're in. As Minister Shanique was praying and she said three days. I don't even know if she noticed what she said. But she kept saying that she said in three days. She said three days. And that, that thing jumped out at me. And that's when the Lord said to me. He said we're in a time sensitive season. And so as I start to think about it a little bit more. The Lord took me into the book of Genesis. And uh, I went into the book of Genesis. The 17th chapter. And I read one line. Actually Genesis 22. We'll go back to Genesis 17. But when I got to Genesis 22. The word read. Sometime later God tested Abraham. And the Lord said in the test. But El Shaddai. He said, in the test, but El Shaddai. And so reading from Genesis 17, just a few verses, 2 through 7. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Serve me faithfully and live a blameless life. I will make a covenant with you. By which I will guarantee to give you countless descendants. At this, Abram fell face down on the ground. Then God said to him, this is my covenant with you. I will make you the father of a multitude of nations. What's more, I am changing your name. It will no longer be Abram. Instead, you will be called Abraham. 
For you will be the father of many nations. I will make you extremely fruitful. Your descendants will become many nations and kings will be among them. I will confirm my covenant with you and your descendants. I want to say that one more time. I will confirm my covenant with you and your descendants after you. From generation to generation. This is the everlasting covenant. I will always be your God. And the God of your descendants after you. Genesis 22 says sometime later God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love. Isaac, to be specific, he said, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there. As a burnt offering on a mountain, I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham did not delay. The word says, early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son, Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told them about. On the third day, three days later, three days, I say, round the bios home, yet God time sensitive, on the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on, on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the wood and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke, spoke up. Finally built up the nerve. He spoke up. And he said to, his father, to Abraham, his father, Father, Yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? <laughs> Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. You may be seated in the house. El Shaddai. In the test, but El Shaddai. And I've learned that El Shaddai is only used seven times in the whole Bible. It was first used in the book of Genesis here when God appeared to Abraham. And later in Exodus, he reveals himself to Moses as Yahweh, the God who saves. But what is the meaning of El Shaddai? It means God Almighty. Now, there are six other references of El Shaddai in the scripture. All of them are in the context of one, God speaking, and two, God making a covenant or a promise. Whenever you hear El Shaddai, you look for two things, God speaking and God making a covenant or a promise. He made a covenant and a promise to Abraham to Isaac and to Jacob. Remember, he said to Abraham, he said from generation to generation, glory to God. And so those of you that have children in the building today, I want you to grab a hold of this world. I want you to take a look at your life. And I want you to say to yourself, is this what I want to be handed down from one generation to the next generation? Am I living what I want to my child live? Am I going where I want to see my child go? Am I speaking what I want to hear my child speak? From generation to generation are we serving God? Hallelujah. Will our children follow us as we follow God? 
And so today I'm not just speaking to you, I'm speaking to your generations that were yeah. fallen. Oh, glory to Jesus. All references about should I paint a picture of God who is mighty to do yeah. what he said he would do. What he says will come to pass. Yes, yes, if he said it, he will do it. Just like in the book of Genesis, in the beginning he said, let there be. And there was. So he's the same God yesterday, today and forever. He does not change. Is he speaking? Hallelujah. I preach the message. Remember what he said. And so it was just the foundation preparing us for what the Lord would have me to say today. And so today I want you to remember the promises of God that are over your life. What has God spoken to you? Come on, do not forget what God said. There is a promise that he spoke. And if he spoke it, he's going He's coming to back it up. He's coming to back it up. It shall be made manifest. El Shaddai was first mentioned right here in Genesis 17. When he said to Abram, he appeared to Abram, the word said. And what I love about it is God introduced himself to Abram. He said, I am El Shaddai. Nice to meet you. Come on, come on. My God. <laughs> I am El Shaddai. Yeah. I call Abram a blessed God, a best man, because you know a lot of times God would speak, but he's not that clear. Yes, sometimes you really gotta dig in. You gotta dig to hear what God is saying. God would I God, I, God you say one thing, but but I'm here and this ain't making no sense. So I call Abram blessed because God was very clear in who he was to him. But can I encourage you today and say to you, he is the same to you as he was to Abram. He is El Shaddai. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him. He said, I am El Shaddai which inter is interpreted as God Almighty. Now there are times in life when we walk through different such situations and different circumstances, and we experience God in many different ways. You know what? When we lack, we call for, and we experience challenge. Yes. Anybody ever been sick in your body? It's when we come and, and we call for wrath. We need the healer, right? Yeah, yeah, and then, then we're in trouble, and, and you know, we're tossing and we're turning, we call Jehovah Shalom, God, we need your peace. Yeah, yeah. But here were the requirements, he said, he said, serve me faithfully. Let me say it again. Help us. There's a requirement. Yeah. Serve me faithfully, faithfully and live a blameless life. I'm not just going to talk here about this just for a minute because you know what I noticed today is we have some people that, that tend to only know God when they need him my mom would use an example of a, of a Christmas tree we take him down in the season of Christmas but when Christmas is done we take that tree down and we pack it in a box and we put it back on the shelf But here it is, you want to experience the hand of God when you don't want to seek his face. Oh you only want the bonuses. Right? You want the bonuses. Yeah, yeah, you, you want that plus. You want what he has to give. You don't want the relationship, but you want what he has to give you. Back home, we call that a pot cake. You only, you only know me when you need me. Is that the way we treat God? But if it is so, I don't want you to think that you're going to experience a 
Elisha died. Because there was a criteria that needed to be met when God was very specific to Abraham. He said, serve me faithfully and live a blameless life. But now here he comes. Here God comes displaying the character traits of El Shaddai. He said, I will make a covenant with you. So when El Shaddai shows up, I want you to know he's spoken something. If El Shaddai shows up, he's already said something. Because he speaks first and then he shows up. But the character traits of El Shaddai is what he is, is, is the residue. What he leaves behind is this. He makes a covenant with you. He said, by which I will guarantee to you countless descendants. We have seen this. How many of us pray the prayer? He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When you pray in that prayer about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I want you from this day to remember that you're talking about El Shaddai, God. Because he's the God that blessed the father of all nations, Abraham, and it went down from generation to generation. So moving along, at the age of 99 and 90, Abraham and Sarah, respectively, in the space, in, 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 the, in the, the face of a natural impossibility. Naturally, it was impossible. That's another character trait of El Shaddai. When it cannot be done. When you can't figure that thing out yourself. <laughs> when you work for years trying to get this thing done and it ain't done. Anybody facing a natural impossibility today? I need you to remember what God spoke. What did he say? God declared... That Abraham and Sarah will have descendants. He said, I am El Shaddai. It will be so because I have said so, and I am Almighty. And true to his word, Abraham did, of course, have a son Isaac, Isaac, the father of Jacob. Which leads us to a second mention of El Shaddai in Genesis 28 and 3. Mighty God, may God Almighty bless you, the word says, and make you fruitful and increase your numbers until you become a community of people. Another character trait of El Shaddai is he speaks to generations. He speaks to generations. You may be receiving the word apostle. You may be receiving the word elder. But it is for your generation. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ooh. Thank you, Lord. Ooh. The future. Come yes, on. My God. So, Minister when he speaks a word to you. And El Shaddai appears. That word is for your generations. It's for the fruit of your loins. For your children and your grandchildren. And your great-grandchildren. And so I entreat you today, let it be a blessing. Yes. Glory to God. Live your life before the Lord that your children and your children's children will be blessed. Yes. The word says, I will bless them that bless you and I will curse them that curse you. Yes. Live your life blameless before God Amen. and serve him faithfully, God says. And I will make you fruitful and you shall That confirms what he promised Abraham in Genesis 17. This is the everlasting covenant, he says. I will always be your God and the God of your descendants after you. Me, your children and your children's children. They will declare who God is. Yes. Jesus. Jesus. Continue to stand firm in who you believe that he is. Yes. 
What I love about this is I learned that God only appeared as El Shaddai, you know, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm. Oh, my question was why? In Sunday school, we would have learned that Abraham was the father of what? Faith. My God. My God. Abraham was the father of faith. Sunday school, by beating you. We would have learned that. And so this was why God only showed up as El Shaddai to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because it was enough for them. Mm. Oh my God. Wow. They had enough faith. Mm. That him showing up. Speaking and showing up was enough. Was enough. Yeah. Let me make it a little more clear. Yeah, when Moses came later. Let's compare. El Shaddai. To Yahweh. Yahweh is the God who saves. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So when Yahweh showed up to Moses and the children of Israel, when we look at the children of Israel, they complained. Yeah, yeah. They murmured. Yeah. They didn't believe. Yeah. They didn't have faith. Yeah. So God had to actually come and deliver them. God had to take action as Yahweh for the children of Israel. Are you the children of Israel generation or are you from Abraham with your faith? God said to me, he said, tell the people if they want me to show up based on what I said, they've got to have faith. He said, I respond to faith. El Shaddai responds to faith. If you need a move of God, you've got to believe what he spoke. If he said it, you better believe it. Because based on your belief, is when he's going to show up. It's a time-sensitive season, glory seekers. It's a time-sensitive season. And you've got to have faith. If you don't have faith, El Shaddai can't show up. He can't respond. He can't move. Because you don't believe and trust what he said. He said, I respond to faith. Abraham had faith. My question to you earlier, what are you teaching your children? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had faith. The father had faith. He taught the son faith. The son taught his son faith. And so they all experienced the move of El Shaddai. The God who shows up. He is indeed El Shaddai. He's mighty to speak and to act. But Yahweh as he responded to Moses and the children of Israel, the God who saved. There's a difference. I'm just gonna expound on this a little bit. When you need saving, you're more of like a damsel in distress. It means that you actually don't believe like you say you believe. Yeah, we may be in a situation where we need God to move for us. Right? right? But it's a different level when we need to be saved. When we need to be rescued. Uh -huh. You understand what I'm saying? When we need to be rescued, you've given up hope. You've given up hope. It reminds me of a, of a story where there was a, a gentleman that was out. He was drifting. He's drifting. There's no way, no sign of land. He's drifting. 
And he's praying to God. He said, God, I need somebody to come and help me. I need to be rescued. God sends a helicopter. He sends a helicopter away. He said, no, I'm waiting on God. He sent the boat. Boom, boom. Come. Paddle this way. No, go. I'm waiting on God. My God. And so we have to put ourselves in the category where we are a people of faith. We don't need to be rescued because we know that God is going to come through. It's only a matter of time God is going to come through. He may come when you want to, mind you, but he's going to come through. But guess what? When he comes, he's right on time. And when he comes through, he does what he says he's going to do. I know my mom says, she said, when God fix that thing, it's well fixed. Glory to God. I don't care what you do. You can't fix a situation like God can. Because when God fixes a situation, he fixes it from its entire perspective. Glory to God. You may look at it. If, 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 if I look at this bottle, I can see the front of the bottle from where I'm standing. If this was dirty, I would wipe the front of it. That's what I can see. But God can see this bottle in its entirety. In its full circumference. And so if God cleans this bottle, he cleans it entirely. So no matter what angle you're looking from, glory to God, the angle that I can't see, God has already cleaned. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, my God. Yes, Lord. Mm. Therefore, Exodus 6 and 6 says, Therefore, say to the Israelites, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. <laughs> yeah, the Lord really wants me to talk about this damsel in distress mentality because for 400 years, the children of Israel were in bondage. And God told them he was going to deliver them. Even while they were in bondage, they knew God was going to save them. But they didn't believe. My God. There is a difference. God spoke and told the children of Israel that he was going to deliver them. But because they were not a people of faith, he had to send a Moses. He had to send a Moses when he only had to speak to Abraham. My God. Jesus. Wow. Y'all get that? Yes, Yes, Don't be in a position where God has to send somebody to you. Jesus. Come, I'm going to bring it into 2023. That's why we're so hung up on these prophecies. That's right. That right there, my That right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the same situation. God got to be sending somebody. You got to be on every prophetic line. Sit your tail down and let God speak to you. But for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, El Shaddai, he was enough. As I saw that, there was a song that we sang, you're more than enough. More than enough for me. Lord, you are more than enough. But listen to what the word says in Hebrew 11. Hebrews 11, 17 to 19. It says, by faith. Abraham, when tested, God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. 
He who had embraced the promise. I don't want you to just hear the promise. I need you to embrace it. Amen. When God speaks, you don't just hear it, you receive it. Yeah. But he who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. Listen. Even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. God, if you're telling me to sacrifice this child, how is he going to reproduce? My God. How are generations going to come from him if he's dead? So we know, I've looked at this scripture so many times, and from so many different angles, until I realized that Abraham reasoned, this was his thinking, that God could even raise him from the dead if he needed to, so that his word may be fulfilled. So Abraham was faith, had faith in God enough to believe, because God had already spoken it. God has said it, your son, through your son is going to come generations. Yeah, he was specific. Because we know that was an Ishmael. There was an Ishmael. But God was specific, he said, through your only son. I don't even know why God did that. Let me just share this. I said to my husband last night. I said, I said, we know that there is, come on, glories. Right. God said, God said to Abraham, he said, take your only son, your beloved son, Isaac. And like I just said, we know that there was an Ishmael, right? So as I started to think back on the story of Ishmael, we know that Abram and Sarah, or Sarai, moved prematurely. They moved out of season. They were not time sensitive. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. So after Ishmael was born, was when God said to Abraham and Sarah that they were going to have a son. You two. He was specific. You and you, Sarah. Not a maid or midwife. No, no. You two. It's going to come through Sarah. So Abraham said to God, but there's an Ishmael God, why you don't just use him? Because right. ain't nothing happening. I am 99 and this woman is already 90. Right. This is naturally impossible. Right. The word tells us that God was still specific and said to them, no, what I said is what I said and what I said is going to happen. Right. He said, now I'm still going to bless Ishmael. Yeah. The word said that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He said, <laughs> and it's something that still lingers today. God explained the type of person that Ishmael was going to be. Basically, he was going to be problematic because he was outside. Outside of the covenant. Anybody hear that? Anybody got that? If we look at marriages today, we have a lot of people that have children outside of the covenant of marriage. And those children that are outside of the marriage, they still carry that Ishmael spirit. That's true. That's true. That's true. They still feel left out. They're still fighting for. The repercussions. Or the consequences of doing it your way and not waiting on God's. But why did Abraham reason 
that God could bring Isaac back from the dead. But why was he even thinking that? It was because simply God had spoken what he was going to do. And Abraham believed it. El Shaddai shows up in times of testing. I don't want you to believe that he's just going to show up. Whenever you feel that you're in a time of testing is when you need to remember what God said. My God, that's good. Mm -hmm. Or oh, am I helping somebody? You know? yes. In times when it's hard to believe, it's when El Shaddai shows up. In times when it's hard to trust, is when El Shaddai shows up. But El Shaddai, can I say to you, he shows up to a people of faith. And for a while, I want us to look in Genesis 22. He says, sometime later, God tested Abraham. It was a test, but it was a test to show up who else should die? Truly was. Oh, my God. Yeah. My God. Then God said, take your son, your only son whom you love, Isaac, mm -hmm. and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there. As a burnt offering on a mountain, I will show you. Early the next morning, the Lord said, look at the responses of Abraham. How did Abraham respond? Abraham responded in faith. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Because I don't know about you, but I would have been sitting down thinking, trying to reason this thing out. Okay. If God said that such and such was going to happen, and it was going to happen through this person, then how it going to happen if I kill him? Yeah, I would have been trying to figure it out. I don't know about you. I'm just going to be honest with you. I would have been trying to pick that thing apart. Well, maybe God, or maybe he. I don't think I would have ever thought about God raising him from the dead. Right. But God said, look at his responses. Abraham knew because the word said God tested him. But he still said, here I am. Abraham still made himself available. Oh my God. In a difficult situation, he still responded, God, here I am. In a time when it was somebody that you love. Come on, mothers in the house. We know when it comes to our children, we ain't hearing much. Come on, fathers. We know that when it comes to our children, we ain't hearing much. But Abraham still responded, here I am. After he got the instructions, he didn't delay the work. Says early the next morning, Abraham got up and he loaded his donkey. But on the third day, <laughs> let that hit your shoulder. On the third day. He looked up and he saw the place in the distance. The word of God says we walk by faith, not by sight. Here again is another reason we call Abraham the father of faith. Because the Lord didn't tell him where he was going. He said to a place that I will show you. How many of us are walking out the instructions of the Lord, not even knowing where it is that we're going, but we're believing God by faith, and so we're continuing to walk. God, I hear you say do it, so I'm going to do it. God, I know, don't know exactly what you're saying or what you're going to do or how you're going to do it, but I'm going to follow your instructions. God, I'm going to obey you, for to obey is better than sacrifice. God, I hear your voice over here, so I'm going to go over here. You say, go over here, God. I say, okay, yeah, I'm going to turn around, and I'm going to go follow these instructions. God, I'm going to go where you say had to go. Jesus. Jesus. My God. And Abraham had the audacity to tell his son, stay here. My God. I'll be back. Right. 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 He said, stay here. Jesus. Now, 
What does not surprise me is when he said that we're going to worship because if you know Moses, any time Moses had an encounter with God, he would build an altar. Right. Yeah. So Abraham was a worshiper. Yeah, 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 yeah. Altar. Abraham was a worshiper. Yeah. Any time he had an encounter with God, he yeah. built an altar. an altar. That altar was a place of worship. Yeah. It was a place of sacrifice and it was a place of remembrance. Yes. Build yourselves altars. Yes, altars are markers that can pull you up on down days. An altar is a place when the situation looks dark. You can go back to that place and remember what he did. But he said, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. He said, we will worship and then we will come back to you. He didn't say, I will come back to you. He said, we will come back. Abraham, how are you coming back? And God tell you, go sacrifice this boy. Abraham just believed what God said. Abraham took the wood and the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father, yes, my son. Abraham replied, the fire and the wood are here, Isaac said. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? God says, be mindful of Abraham's response. Abraham responded, God himself. Yeah, El Shaddai, God himself, God Almighty, will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And how many of you know that God did provide the ram in the tent? <laughs> if we go further down as he spoke it is what happened God provided them so in the test I want you to understand there's a ram in the in the test El Shaddai speaks in the test he shows up in the test he overcomes I needed this word today I don't know about you but I needed to check my faith because El Shaddai responds to your faith glory to God Of faith. If you look at the roots of Hebrew, Shaddai, the meaning becomes even more clearer. Yeah. One root in the word meaning is to overpower. God is the one who overcomes. Another root is the word for breast, which describes the all sufficiency of God. He's the life giver, He's the provider, He's the one who shows up when you need Him, He's the one who shows up because you believe Him. He's the one who shows up because you trust him. He's the one who shows up knowing that you need him. But he's more concerned knowing that you believe and trust in what he said. He said, I am El Shaddai and I will respond. Because you believe God. My God. Yeah, we say it. I believe God. Do you really believe God? Hallelujah. Do you really believe do you trust him yes. during the test? Jesus. In times of testing, mm -hmm. in times of trouble, mm -hmm. trust God. Yes. He said, Lo, I am with you always, even until the end. 
even until the end of the world, you see. He said, I'll never leave you. Nor forsake you. When it seems naturally impossible, <laughs> it seems like it's a miracle, but do you have faith? <laughs> when things happen, and we say, oh, this was a miracle. That was a miracle. After today, I will look at a situation differently because I would want to know, did that person actually believe God for what he said? Because now I know the characteristics of El Shaddai. Odessa, when we sing about El Shaddai, we now know who he is. He's the all-sufficient, almighty God. The song says he's the sovereign one. Yahweh of Israel, he's El Shaddai. In the test, But El Shaddai. And I didn't say but God because. Because of the factor of our faith. Faith is the f main factor. In the manifestation of a spoken word. And so even as God prepared us for the message he said to remember what he said. Today the word has come for us to check our faith. So should you remember what God, what God said and you have faith to believe that it shall be manifested. El Shaddai shows up. That thing becomes manifested. So I want us to stand to our feet today. The word of God says that without faith it is impossible to please God. We cannot please him without faith. God, I want to please you. I want to please you. And the word says that we're giving a me given a measure of faith. It's given to us. But what are we doing with it? Being the first partaker of this message, I had to repent. Because the storms of life would batter you to the place where you lose your faith. Storms will come. Disappointments will come. I'm going to knock you from left to right. And sometimes you're standing and you're weathering a storm. And I know something, I don't know about you, but I would cry, oh God, where are you? Can't you see what I'm going through? God, this is hard. Lord, how long? I took those, those words from David. How long, Lord? 
How long will the wicked reign? How long? And he always comes through. He always comes through. I'll tell you that. He never fails. But it still does not. It still does not remove the sting or the residue from disappointments or discouragements. And so I say this morning to be encouraged. The word says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Anybody discouraged this morning? Anybody need a boost of faith this morning? Come to this home. Anybody needs to repent for not trusting in God? Run to this home. Anybody need us, or you in need of, of, of something from God that you just, it just looks impossible. It looks impossible. And so you find yourself asking God, can this really come to pass? God, can you really do this thing? God, this looks so hard. I need you to do this thing for me, God, but I'm so tired. God, it's been so long when you're going to come through for me. God, I need to see you, God. I'm getting tired. And my faith is small, God, this morning. And so we come before you this morning, God. We thank you, God, for this word. And Father, we thank you, God, even as it cuts, God, that it would heal. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God, that your word, God, would become alive in us today, God. We pray today, God, that it would not fall on rocky soil. God, but it would fall on good soil in the name of Jesus. And Father, God, that it would spring up in us, God, become alive in us, oh God. And we will believe you. We will believe what you spoke, what you said, God. Father, today we repent. We come repenting today, oh God, for doubting you. We come this morning, God, repenting because of unbelief. Father, forgive us for not believing who you say you are. Forgive us for not believing what you said you would do. But Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you build each and every one of us this morning. We pray, God, that you would open our eyes, that we see you. Open our ears today, God, that we would hear you. Father God, we pray.